And greetings, friends. Welcome to Tomorrow's World Program, where we can give you powerful insights into today's news and the prophecies of tomorrow's world. Now, my friends, think hard with me for a moment. I know it's hard to think hard, but think hard. What would be the most exciting banner headline possible for tomorrow morning's newspaper or television news program tomorrow? Would it be something about the avian flu? That's possible. Would it be something about a new war? That's possible. What about this headline? Jesus Christ has returned in power to rule the world. Yes, a new world government has been set up, the headline might say, with its capital at Jerusalem. All over the world, people would be astonished. And yet I can tell you, my friends, on the highest authority, this most awesome event will happen soon, probably within the lifetime of many of us. Are you personally preparing for the second coming of Jesus Christ? Do you know when and how it will occur? Do you know the specific events leading right up to Christ's return to this earth? Stay tuned. My friends, I know that many of you have been disillusioned about the idea of Jesus Christ's second coming. A very real Satan the devil has confused and deceived this world in many ways. People have really been mixed up about it. Some guys say, oh, he's going to come tonight. Or others say, a thousand years from tonight. All kinds of things have been said. He has used misguided individuals to confuse people about the second coming of Jesus Christ. We need to realize that. But if you truly believe the Bible, most of you believe the Bible, you're sincere, you have to believe that Jesus Christ is definitely going to return to this earth because the Bible says so over and over again. Again, when will Christ return? And what are the signs you should watch for? Go get your Bible if you have one handy. Prove these things right out of your own Bible. I don't ask you to believe me. You don't need to believe me. Believe what you see clearly in the pages of your Bible. Look at what Jesus Christ himself clearly predicted in Matthew 24. Check up on me now. Follow what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 24, beginning in verse 3. Jesus was talking to his disciples here on Mount Olive. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? What will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Not the earth being blown apart, but the end of this present age of man's rule over this earth. Under the influence of Satan, frankly, it has been for 6,000 years. The end of the age. What are the signs? Notice, he said, take heed that no one deceive you. And he described false prophet. He said, many will come in my name. Not a few oddballs. Many will come in Jesus' name saying, I am the Christ, saying Jesus is the Christ, he was talking, and will deceive many. Many people coming in Jesus' name, deceiving many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, and he describes then world war finally coming, and there will be famines, terrible lack of food. That hasn't hit us yet, but it will. It's not always going to be over in Bangladesh or somewhere. Please understand that. Famines, disease epidemics. Yes, avian flu is apparently on the way. We're sorry about that. But these events will happen. Disease epidemics and earthquakes in various places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then he describes great tribulation on God's true people, another event. And then he describes a time of lawlessness, people just going their own way, the world society breaking down. And then he says, verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom... Somewhere on this earth, there's going to be a great gospel of the kingdom of God. And it's going to be preached to all the world as a witness to all nations. Think about that. Who is doing that? These signs are going to occur. Have you ever experienced a pestilence, a disease epidemic? Picture the horrified disease epidemics of the past. 
and now health professionals tell us that a truly massive epidemic of avian flu is a growing possibility, if not probability. We need to watch and pray and understand God is real. These epidemics will occur with increasing frequency just before Christ's second coming. And then, as I said, the next event is someone, a work of God, somewhere preaching the gospel of the kingdom or government. Kingdom means government of God as a witness of Christ coming back as king of kings. Who's going to do that? Not to convert everybody, but as a witness. Verse 15 then tells us something else. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, here Jesus is validating the Old Testament. He did that continually. The Old Testament is God's word spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place. And that was always at the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Whoever reads, let him understand. Then people were to flee to safety. A soon coming abomination, my friends, is to be set up in Jerusalem. By soon, I don't mean next year, but probably within the next 6 to 12 years, something like that is going to happen. I give you those numbers just as a general guideline by what's happening now and the chronology showing we're near the end of the 6,000 years. No, the 6,000 years were not up in 2000. Archbishop Usher was wrong, and nearly all the chronologists have showed us that even before that time occurred. There's several more years to go, but it's not going to be forever. This Temple Mount is now controlled by the Muslims, but shocking events will soon begin to occur within the next several years to change all that. There will probably be animal sacrifices on this spot, and immediately before the Great Tribulation, an abomination, some terrible, abominable pagan statue or something will be set up right there, which is described in the book of Daniel. That's going to be a big major event just before Christ's return. Notice now verse 21. And then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. In other words, there would be cosmicide, the complete obliteration of all human life off this planet unless God intervened. Unless God intervened by sending Jesus back to this earth. So that's another major sign right at the very, very end. Think of how cosmicide could occur, my friends. Russia has thousands of atomic bombs. You know that. The newspapers tell you that quite often. They know that. Now both Iran and North Korea are building these very weapons themselves. Only in our time. It's not been possible way back when. I know thought people thought Christ might come several hundred years ago. Some back in the mid-1800s thought that. Cosmicide was not frankly possible at that time. It is possible now and imminent now unless God intervenes. So Jesus' clear statement showed that we are now at the very end of an age. You need to know precisely what lies just ahead. You need to be aware of the specific signs preceding Christ's return to this earth. So I want to offer you a free copy, my friends. This booklet is entitled, 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. It will be sent absolutely free upon your request. This booklet lists and explains 14 specific events to watch for immediately preceding Jesus' return to earth. It will make your newspaper reading and television news viewing really come alive. For once you've read 14 signs booklet, you'll know exactly what to watch for leading right up to Christ's second coming. So call us today and request your free copy of 14 signs announcing Christ's return. Just ask for the booklet on 14 signs. That's all you need. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. 
Tomorrow's World Magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Now, my friends, back to our topic, Prepare for Christ's Second Coming. Please turn again to Matthew 24, where we were a few moments ago. Matthew 24, one of the final events before Christ's return is described right here, something massive affecting the entire world. He said, For then will be great tribulation, the greatest time of trouble in human history up to that point such as has not been since the beginning of the world of this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh, no flesh would be saved alive. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. Every human being would be obliterated. So, my friends, we need to realize we now have atomic and biological weapons, chemical warfare, everything more beyond what has ever been available before. And these terrible weapons are going to be used. Without God's intervention, they would be used. And the Bible indicates that. Another big event to watch for as Christ's coming approaches us is to watch for the final revival of the Roman Empire. Yes, you may not have understood that. But the so-called Roman Empire or Holy Roman Empire will be resurrected one last time just before Christ's return. Watch for it in your newspapers. They even refer to it, frankly, from time to time in that terminology. Most of the time they don't, but watch it developing. Notice Revelation 17, Revelation chapter 17 in your Bible. A powerful scripture and something you need to be very familiar with, frankly. Revelation chapter 17, and I'll begin in verse 1. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me, the apostle John writes, who wrote this saying, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot, or as the King James has, great whore, who sits on many waters. Now, these waters are identified in verse 15. God shows his own signs, gives the definition. He said, verse 15, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Many different nations speaking different languages with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, verse 2, and the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. When you understand it, spiritual drunkenness comes over much of the world. So he carried me away in the spirit. I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. Here a woman sits on this beast, which was full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. So the woman rides the beast. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, the colors of harlotry and the colors of royalty, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her name, on her forehead, a name was written, notice, Mystery, Babylon the Great. God calls this whole church state system, as it used to be and will be again, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. And he says, the woman was drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. The angel said, why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman, of the beast that carries her, who has seven heads and ten horns. The beast that you saw was and is not, and will ascend out of the bottomless pit. This beast went down into a sort of a symbolic pit that sort of disappeared for a while. And go to perdition. She will ultimately be destroyed. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life. You see, they won't understand, most people, when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Here is the mind of wisdom. So the seven heads are seven mountains. Often the Bible uses the term mountain for kingdom. Seven different kingdoms upon whom this woman was to sit. And the seven mountains are the seven heads on, the, on which the woman sits. There are seven kings, five are fallen, when this vision was finally revealed, frankly, some years ago, near the time of the end. One is, there's a small, quick revival, as I'll show you, it was the Hitler-Mussolini revival, and Mussolini, as the Encyclopedia Americana brought out, literally proclaimed his Italian empire when he conquered other nations in Somaliland and Africa as the Roman Empire. 
He said that himself, and that was a quickie revival, so to speak. One is, and the other, the final one, has not yet come. And my friends, it still has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time, just a brief revival, yet a powerful revival, leading right up to Christ's return to this earth. And the beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth. So it goes back through the seven revivals of the Roman Empire, uh, you know, plus the original Roman Empire, and he then is the eighth Roman system. He is the eighth and is going into perdition. He will go into destruction. And the ten horns which you saw on this final beast, notice, are ten kings. These ten dictators are kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. And he, go, he goes, of course, and shows that's going to be a very short time. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to this final dictator. Now, Hitler went around and Mussolini crushing other nations, but the final one is going to be very charismatic, very clever. He will pose as a great man of peace, a benevolent person. These other kings or leaders will give their authority to this man. He won't have to conquer them first. But I want you to realize how this system functioned and how it's going to come again at the very end. Picture, my friends, the strutting Mussolini who publicly stated that he had revived the Roman Empire. And remember Adolf Hitler, his partner in ruling Europe and threatening Britain and America and the United States. Many of us older folks lived right through those frightening times. We saw that and experienced that. I did as a young man. Think about it. The final ten kings, though, give their authority to this final dictator. These final ten kings, notice verse 14, the arrogance they have, which shows the tremendous power this final system is going to have. In verse 14, these make war with the Lamb. And the Lamb, that's Jesus Christ, the returning Christ, will overcome them. For He is King of kings and Lord of lords, and those who are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. They had the supreme arrogance to think they can fight Christ. They must have had a lot of power to have that kind of arrogance. And this occurs just before and leads right up to Christ's return. So watch for this developing Roman Empire. It will eventually be led by an extremely clever and charismatic leader. And it will be heavily influenced by a powerful religious system and a great false prophet you all need to watch for. And I'll be describing him in a few moments. Again, be sure to call or write and request your free booklet, 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. This powerful, well-documented booklet lists and explains 14 specific events to occur just before Jesus' return. You'll find this booklet, 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return, very exciting and very helpful as you watch prophetic events unfold. And they are speeding up. It's going to affect your life in this generation now. So call us and request your free copy of 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. Just ask for the booklet on 14 Signs. That's all you need. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 3800, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28227. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Finally, my friends, be fully aware that somewhere on this earth today is a man who will soon manifest himself to those who understand as the great false prophet. Who is this man? Think about it. He's alive today. How can you identify him? Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 
Check up in your Bible. This is an exciting chapter when you understand. A New Testament chapter written by the Apostle Paul, inspired of God to tell us what's just ahead in your life. Second Thessalonians 2. Paul writes, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken. Don't be upset easily or quickly in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter as though from us even false letters supposedly written by Paul were being circulated, which he did not write, as if Christ's coming had come, you see. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless, notice this, just before Christ's coming, the falling away comes first. There's got to be a great apostasy. The man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition. A great man of sin is going to be revealed just before Christ's return, who opposes and exalts himself, this man, above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God. He's going to sit in a very big, magnificent place, acting like God. He sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? Paul said, I warned you personally. I pleaded with you. As he says in Acts chapter 20, with tears, he tried to warn them about this falling away. For the mystery of iniquity, or mystery of verse 7, of lawlessness, as it is in the New King James Version, which is the correct translation, lawlessness He's not talking about the traffic laws. All they had was ox carts and donkeys back then. He says the mystery of lawlessness, a system based upon the idea you don't have to keep God's law. Grace does away with the need to obey God. It's very, very clever, very charismatic. It lets you off real easy. Fake grace, cheap grace, it can be called. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Even back then, men were beginning to get into that kind of thing. Only he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. That might have been the Apostle Paul himself. And then the lawless one, the final one who's going to do this, will be revealed. Whom the Lord will consume. Notice this guy, the final one, is right before Christ's coming. Leads right into Christ's coming. So the final one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume directly, uh, actually uh, uh, blow up or destroy with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. This final beast and this final false prophet are going to be strutting all over the world stage. People think, boy, they've got control of everything. Yes, they almost do for a while, but it's not going to last very long. And you'd better be sure you're on the winning team, my friends. You'd better be sure you're on the team of Jesus Christ who's really doing what the Christ of the Bible says and not just going along with your friends and not going along with the society around you. Think. Watch and pray, as Jesus said. You really need to understand we want to help you in this work. That's why we're here. We're not doing what's popular or we join the mainstream. But we're trying to tell you something you need to know. And you really do, because this thing is underway right now. This man is alive right now. So he's going to be destroyed by Christ's coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. He's good. Satan is behind him and performing false miracles. But it shows he's going to come with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. This is the key, my friends. In addition to watching world events, you should prepare for Christ's return. How do you do that? Notice again, it's a matter of learning to receive the love of the truth. You see, they did not receive the love of the truth. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all might be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They did not believe the truth. My friends, please, for your sake, you've got to learn to feed on this book. Feed on this book. This is Christ's word, Christ's message in print. And learn to follow the truth. Ask God for real understanding. You should find out who's really teaching the full truth of the Bible and follow them as they follow Christ. Please learn to do that. Learn to do that. 
Remember my favorite scripture, Galatians 2 and verse 20. The apostle Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. That's the key. Christ will live his life in you through the Holy Spirit. If you truly surrender to the true Christ of the Bible, say, God, help me to follow your will. Help me to understand. Help me to follow your son Jesus and follow his example and what he really taught. Christ lives in me. Paul said, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. That's Galatians 2.20. That personifies Christianity about as well as any verse in the Bible. Notice Revelation 14.12. Revelation 14, verse 12, it says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments, plural, of God and the faith of Jesus. As it says in Galatians 2, verse 20, you're to have the faith of Jesus, not just faith in Jesus. So the true saints will be those who keep the commandments, all ten of them. Don't water down the commandments. Don't do away with the fourth commandment or try to change it around. But keep all of the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus, where Jesus will live his life within you. Will you be one of these saints? Will you be protected from this coming great tribulation? Will you be in the kingdom of God? Again, my friends, call or write immediately and request your free copy of our eye-opening booklet, 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return. This booklet, 14 Signs Announcing Christ's Return, a very attractive booklet, will be sent absolutely free upon your request. Just ask to the booklet on 14 Signs. Call now. And please tune in every week, my friends, to Tomorrow's World program. On this program, you will gain precious information and insights available nowhere else. Richard Ames and I will give you understanding of current events and of the exciting prophecies of tomorrow's world. See you right here next week. This informative booklet is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's one 800 Nine three four five five seven nine, or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box three eight zero zero, Charlotte, North Carolina, two eight two two seven. To view today's program, order the free literature offered, or for more information on today's vital subject, visit us online at www.tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.